meeting is now streaming on live my... on Facebook. And it's still setting up something on my side, but okay. So go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Facebook family. We are just delighted to um, be able to hang out with you here this morning. We are excited as per usual because we are here and we are actually functional <laughs> and God has given us something to share with you. And there's just so much going on in the world today and we need to just begin to understand what that looks like. So I'm trying, I'm playing games with my phone here, trying to figure out, we, we're changing formats and you guys know that as, a, as an elder, I am somewhat tech challenged. However, I'm less challenged now than I have been. So I'm grateful and I'm grateful to God for giving me the mind to be able to be challenged. And so I- so Why am, you look for that? I got it. I want to tell oh. folks to meet us next week on YouTube Live. Uh, we are moving over to the YouTube station uh, so that uh, more people can see us. Because you know, on Facebook, you kind of have to have an account. While we love that and we, we like the account, the, those that have the accounts over here, mm -hmm. we, can, uh, we want more people to meet us over on the YouTube channel. So we're looking forward to see you there. Check the link and we will post it and save it for next time. Go there now, subscribe to our page and we'll see you there next week. But we're going to talk to you here today. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, it is free to subscribe. It doesn't cost any money. All you have to do is is fine. Type in um, our link in the search bar and click on it and subscribe. Um, in case you guys don't know, that's Dr. Walker. She's she's blacking us out today, but her voice <laughs> is available and usable. <laughs> and we all have those blackout days. So I'm just grateful we got the technology and uh, it can do what it do. <laughs> I can see can you on Facebook do. too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was we just making sure I could see you on Facebook. And everybody, oh, yeah. please share, share, share. Yeah, yeah. Because if you guys don't know, these are the times we need to really find out about the revelation of Christ. Who is Christ? What he do? And what we don't want to do is miss him like the other generation. Because even though it's part of God's plan, his sovereign plan, but the people missed out. Think about the days of Jonah when, uh, not Jonah, but uh, Noah, when people were eating and drinking and dancing and partying and doing whatever they did. And he was building the ark and they thought, okay, he's crazy and nothing's going to happen. We don't even know what rain is. So how can we, how can we? So it's like, okay, I'm here to tell you it rained and everything got destroyed except those that God had preserved. But they had to have the knowledge of that. And that's what we're here about. Joel tells us that my people perish for lack of knowledge. And God is saying to us, these are the times of Elijah. You need to declare the name of the Lord. And you need to know who the Lord is that you're declaring. Because there's so much deception going on in the world today. We got folks that's just all the way somewhere else. And I don't even know what that looks like. But at any rate. We're going to do what God called us to do, which is right now where I'm going to pray. <laughs> Father, we love you so much. And we're so grateful that you are our God and that you loved us so much that you gave us your only begotten son and that whosoever believeth in your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, if we want to say it in Hebrew, Jesus Christ, if we want to say it in English, Jesus, if we want to say it in Spanish, we're just saying to you that you want to know him, that this is the time to know Christ, to know what he did, why he did it, and who you are in him, and how Christ can govern you through these difficult times. I'm reading a book called New Wine, Skins for New Wine, because this is new wine. God is pouring out something new, and I don't mean alcohol wine, I mean Holy Ghost wine that helps you
to govern who you are, helps you to get your systems in alignment and help you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are God's kid and that God is your Abba Father. That means Dada in the Greek. So Abba Father, we come this morning and you said by the spirit of adoption, we can call you Abba Father. You've adopted us. You chose us. That's different than birthing us, birthing us. You chose to love us. You chose to birth us into the kingdom. You chose to do all the supernatural things that your sovereign capacity permits that we can handle because there's so much more that we can't even think about. Ask or imagine, he said, I'm able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or imagine. And so Lord, you've given us imagination today. And I thank you that our imagination will not be thwarted, that we will see what you call us to see. We will conceive it at the time and we will do or bring forth that which you have called us to bring forth whenever we encounter you, your love, your work, and your call on our lives. Bless my sisters here. Bless everyone who's on Facebook. And bless those on YouTube that's all over the globe. We just thank you right now for just expanding our reach and enlarging our territory. And we ask like Jabez, but Lord, don't let us cause pain. I just thank you for that right now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I don't even know where that came from, but amen. <laughs> I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Um, Revelation chapter one. Is anybody reading today or do I need to? Y'all tell me what to do. I have the New American Standard this, this okay. morning. Okay. Andres, what you got? Amplified. Cool. Well, Rhonda, go first, then Andres, please. And then we'll talk about the first, just read the first three verses. I think we got here last week and then we started talking about <laughs> politics. <laughs> and and thank you, Mellow Desire, for responding to the political conversation because if my people perish for lack of knowledge that means knowledge of who they are who god is what he called them to do purpose mission and all the related things we won't get into that this is not today's lesson but just know that we are working on training some political training and i have a school that has volunteered to say we can do it at their school so i'm pretty excited about that and they got the capacity to do tech that we don't so what a blessing so i guess it was god's will even though it wasn't necessarily a part of our plan but at any rate and can start. we can we share also that what we plan to do is to have a educational session of what is a democrat what is a republican right. what is right. a, a independent so social. that we can explain to our young people what it right. is uh for the, what they're choosing between and to encourage them to go vote. It will right. not be a position of everything no. has to be what we believe. We no, want no, to no. share the knowledge across the board without an argument. <laughs> yeah, and how do you make a decision without information? You exactly. can't make an informed decision if you don't have information. So um, don't good. forget there are other political parties besides oh, yeah. Democrat and yes, Republican. So that. we need to explain all of them. Yes, that's the plan. To, oh. and types of government not yeah. just the, the and and the fact that none of them are pure mm. everyone has a deep deviation from what the original was based on who the leader was at the time happens like that in churches sometimes too you know you got a leadership and you got a, a a campaign going and then the leader leaves or changes or shifts and everything changes so then nobody knows what's going on so now we want to bring you as much as we're capable and you can add to it as to what God is giving us. We'll give you the definitions that are traditional and the explanations as to the mechanics, how they work. But then you think about it and God may give you a deviation of variation or something that is good and healthy that'll help us explain it and understand. Trust me when I tell you, we don't know everything. <laughs> we just know the little bit we know. And with the little bit you know, and a little bit we know, I think we'll all be better informed. Yes, yes, yes. End of the commercial. Amen. 
Let's go. All to right. The let's get with to the word. All right. <laughs> Revelations chapter one, verse mm -hmm. one, the mm -hmm. revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his bond servants, the things which must soon take place. Mm -hmm. And he sent and he communicated it by his angel to his bond servant, John, who mm -hmm. testified to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ even mm -hmm. to all that he saw. Mm -hmm. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy and heed to the things which are written in it for mm -hmm. the time is near. I just want to bring it from the um, yeah. Amplifier. Um, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, his unveiling of the divine mysteries, mm. which God the Father gave to him to show his bond servants, believers, the things which must soon take place in their entirety. He, he sent and communicated by his angel, divine messenger, to his bond servant, John, who testified and gave supporting evidence to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ even to everything that he saw in his visions. Blessed, happy, prosperous, to be admired is he who re reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy and who keep the things which are written in it, heeding them and taking them to heart for the time of fulfillment is near. Okay. So I think he's trying to tell us Jesus is on his way back and it's been a long time coming. But we've got a lot of indications now that it, he described to John very clearly and vividly what it was going to look like when Christ was getting ready to come back. So we're going to talk about that today. And but the key verses was this. Paul said, I am. I mean, John said, I'm a bond servant. And we talked a little bit about that. So we won't dwell on it. But that means I choose to serve. I choose to serve for free. I mean, people who do their work, my uh, Dr. Walker says she likes teaching so much, she would teach for free if she didn't need to get paid. Now that's serious business. You like what you're doing. We like serving Christ. All of us do, because I don't know any of us that's getting paid the big bucks uh, or bucks at all for <laughs> doing ministry. We get donations and love offerings, but the compensation comes from seeing people grow and knowing that we're walking in that anointing and the call that God has on our life. It's the anointing. That's the ability yes. or the authority to be able to do what God called you to do. So and grow, it, yeah, growing yourself. Okay. You growing, um, knowing that you are growing yourself and seeing growth within yourself too. Mm -hmm. Because we don't, we don't always look at that. That's true. That's we don't. True. You know, we always... Our tendency is always to make sure that everybody else is all right mm -hmm. and we put ourselves last when yeah. we should put ourselves first to make sure that everybody else is all right. <laughs> and, and we they say scripture. put the mask on you first. Exactly. Yep. That that was where I was going. <laughs> I love being around uh, intelligent people. We all think alike. So I'm grateful that God said love your neighbor see the whole focus of the kingdom of god and christ coming in the first place was the love of god mm -hmm. he said i am come that you might have life and that more abundantly well you can't have life without love you can't have love without life because they are partners maybe twins you could say but they certainly have one part they have a, a coefficient relationship a collaborative relationship. I'm mixing my science all up in here. But we want to be able to know that if I don't love myself, I can't love you or anybody else because now I'm unhealthy. And if I'm unhealthy, then I'm giving you unhealthy behavior and you learn it, you practice it, you respond to it. And now we got this thing all mixed up. I hope that makes sense. But let's learn how to love ourselves first. And yes. that we're not taught. We're taught to be other-centered. We're taught to achieve. We're taught to go to school. We're taught to learn. We're taught to give. But what about giving to me? I remember one of my conversations with God. I said, you call me to serve your people. And why not, people? 
because you know I'm kind of silly and every now and then it comes out like that but at any rate I am a people and God has called each of us to serve each other and to serve each other that which Christ has given us individually and collectively so we have to love, love one another but he says what in verse 3 you got to hear this word Paul said I'm on Patmos why do I keep saying Paul John said I'm on Patmos because I love the Lord and my desire is to serve him. And he didn't miss a meal. Or as I know, he went homeless, but he was able to be sustained by what God provided him. So will God guide you, people of God? He will provide for you. You just have to be open to the provision and the source. And usually it's our mind and our heart that's thinking in a wrong way that keeps us from receiving what God has for us at every juncture in our lives. So we have to learn how to surrender. This was hard for me because I'm thinking I know what I know and God's a gift and it's nothing. He'll hurry up and shut you down on that little ego trip. It's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it. If you don't know me and what I said, then guess what? It has no value. So I'm like, okay, then you don't have to slap me down hard. He said, yes, I do. Because you, you're hard headed. You know, and I'm learning to ha let my head not get so many bumps. And hopefully we'll, we'll be able to help you understand. But in verse three, it says that I want you to hear and I want you to heed. And that's a, a word we don't use much, but just do it. Just do what I say, no matter what it looks like, no matter how crazy it is because I will always be there. I told you I would never leave you and I will never forsake you. Now you can leave, but I'm gonna be right there and I'm gonna do what I've always done. And that is love you, provide for you, take care of you and keep things moving. Okay, verse four. So um, one more, a little bit on three. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I wanna encourage the beginners of Christ, the learners mm -hmm. of Christ, those who are just getting started. Um, it says, blessed is he who reads. And let, let's, mm. let's take one section at a time. Mm. Sometimes we have to begin with the word simply by reading it. You may yeah. not understand it. Mm -hmm. You may, it may not be, he be got that, they be got that, they be got, like what in the world are they talking about? Don't worry about it, keep reading. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. In the beginning, just keep on reading. And then it says, for those who hear, we, you know, mm. we, we're listening. We have an ear to hear. We want to know. We, we want to, you know, di digest and comprehend mm. that which we are reading. And right. then once you, you, you read it and you hear it, you comprehend it. Now let's start doing it. Exactly. Sometimes you might start doing one little thing at a time, just mm -hmm. one little yeah. thing. And you might focus on that one thing mm -hmm. all year. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, none. Right. <laughs> just keep doing it just keep working the heed to that because while you work on that the holy spirit will be pickpocketing you right okay of these other That's issues interesting. Wait, that wait. are going on he'll uh -huh. be working on the <laughs> other stuff you focus on this and let the holy spirit do that which yeah, only yeah. he can do amen amen all right okay, Dr. okay. yeah so look see <laughs> <laughs> i like that Rhonda. i like that yeah, now, when when she says just read, and you know how she said, "We got that, we got that." Mm -hmm. Help get um choose a version that reads to your understanding. Yes. Be I mean there are so many different mm -hmm. versions, and people mm -hmm. always um old people well not yeah. old people yeah people old people who were, who were raised in the tradition. Yes. Yeah, people yeah. Are raising, you'll be old people. So uh, thank you for I defining understand. that for me. So <laughs> people who are raised in the tradition always say go with the King James version. Right. I am here to tell you that you will be a thousand percent confused. Yes. So you would want to look at the different versions and get one that reads that makes sense to you, so that you can understand and comprehend like Rhonda said first read and then in reading the version that works for you then you will begin to comprehend mm -hmm. which will allow God to work in you and to do what you comprehend 
Amen. Yeah, I heard somebody say that years ago. They said, there's all these translations out there. Which one am I supposed to buy? Right. Whichever one you'll read. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And that's a good explanation. But see, the key is, if you're curious about it, you can you can send us an email or a text and we'll tell you the ones that work well for us and they may work for you or what they mean because each translation has a different focus mm-hmm. and has a different translator. So just like you say, we've said the same thing three different ways on here this morning mm-hmm. and there's more than that. So if you want to find one that works for you, you can try ours, you can try Amplified, you can try the message, you can try New American Standard, they use that at our seminary or New Revised Standard, but they all have very, very minor differences in the way they interpret and put things out there for you to get. So there's one that'll work for you, trust me. And the King James is usually not the best because they don't even speak like that in London now. That was the king and he, and and if you hear people, because people say this all the time, well, I heard King James was gay. What if he was? He put the money up so that the people who studied the Bible, because things then were not like they are now, just a quick history update. Everybody couldn't read. Everybody didn't have books. So they wrote everything on scrolls. They didn't have books. The Gutenberg brothers who invented the printing press didn't come along to the 1600s where the Bible was written. Christ was born, then it was like 180. So we got 1,600 years in them that they, that nobody had, so they had to write it on scrolls and then it had to be interpreted in English. So um, just know if you want to understand, I am a witness that God will bring you understanding. I'm thinking the, you know, we can amen that one for sure, for sure. (laughs) Amen. And even sometimes if you don't want to understand, (laughs) but you need to understand this. So just get with it, girl. You know, he does you like that. After a while, you know, your parents see how disobedient you are or what you lean into it. Look, just do it. I'm not going to be bothered with all them explanations at this moment. So it's just something to think about. Okay. Anything else, y'all? Are we ready? Okay. Go on to four. Four through seven. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth to him who loves us and released us from our sins by his blood. And he has made us to be a kingdom priest uh, to his uh, God, to his God and father, to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Keep going. Okay. I'm just what you got. Okay, Rhonda, that was what? Four, five, four through six. six. Four, five, six. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right. John, to the seven churches that are in the province of Asia, grace be granted to you and peace, inner calm and spiritual well-being from him who is existing forever and who was continually existing in the past and who is to come and from the seven spirits that are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful and trustworthy witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of earth. To him who always loves us and who has once for all freed us or or washed us from our sins by his own blood, his sacrificial death, and formed us into a kingdom as his subjects, priests to his God and Father, to him be the glory and the power and the majesty and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now. Let's just walk through this, starting with verse four. You guys chime in at any point. I love the way the Holy Ghost just weaves our conversations together. But verse four is to the seven churches. Who's the seven churches? This is 
a the symbolic representation of all churches. The number seven was what? The day God yeah. created the whole earth in what? Seven days. So it's symbolic of completion. So it's like the complete church for mm -hmm. all time. The one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. So God said, I started this thing. I went to the end of it. And now it's it's rolling out almost like the, the, the sun rises every day. The earth turns on its axis. Everything God created is related and it has a formula. And that formula is like our DNA. It does what it does and makes us look like our parents, act like our parents, the good part, bad and all of it. But it's, it's a replication of what God has already laid out. So if you've ever had a math formula or you know a pattern that you are making something, creating something, when God created, he created everything all at one time. In seven days, it was done. He rested and then it began to do what it did. Okay, right. hopefully that makes sense. Um, but then in verse, let's see, it's the, the who's the seven spirits? And these, we, these two, go ahead. Go. On the seven churches, uh -huh. they, I, I think it's important to mention that they are literal seven churches mm -hmm. that um, are being talked about here. Mm -hmm. But each church represents a type of church oh, yes. that we have today. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. who was, who is, and is to come. come. It's yeah. for everything. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Yep. Oh, okay. All right. And from G and so he's saying, all right, we have all these seven churches. And we're going to study the churches, the purpose of it. But let's just kind of walk through this part. And from Christ, the faithful and trustworthy witness. He said, okay, God gave me all this, sent me down here to implement it. I left it when I went back to heaven. It's rolling out now. So you guys are my representatives, starting with John on the Isle of Patmos. I'm telling you what it looks like. I'm telling you what you should do. And I'm telling you, he says here, verse five faithful and trustworthy witness, the firstborn of the dead. In other words, Jesus brought himself back to life. And he's saying, I want to reveal to you how to come from your dead life and aspects of it to that which is alive. He said, I came to seek and to save that which was lost and I came to give life and that more abundantly. So we've been in sin since the garden. Let's do a quick, go back there. And we all, he, he told David, you born in sin, shaped in iniquity. So that means that we all have, and iniquity is just sin on top of sin. How can you know, operate outside of sin if you don't even know what sin is? So you got to know that. And he says, you, we now can grow through and become what he called us to be because he was, because he is, and because he is to come. And he created us all for a specific purpose purpose your mom and your daddy got together because god wanted you to come from the both of them with their mm -hmm. good points and their bad points because i was like well god why can you just he said don't ask me how to do my job don't you know don't ask me questions like that just accept it and keep it moving i don't know if you ever do that but i do because sometimes i want to know more than i really am capable of knowing but you know that's my human side anyway he says firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. And he calls us in another place, the kings and priests and kings ruled in the Old Testament. The models of leadership was a king, a priest, and uh, what was the third? There's a third. But at any rate, they are kings that ru the ruled. Kings are like politicians and governors and people with power and big profile, high profile entrepreneurs, the ones that had a lot of wealth. The priests worked in the church. And then there was, I can't think of that a minute. But the key is no, that he's saying in verse six, and he says what? And formed us into a kingdom as his subjects. We are his subjects priest to God and father 
To him be the glory and the power and the majesty and the dominion forever and ever and ever. And remember in Genesis when he created humanity, he said, be fruitful and multiply. I've given you dominion over every Everything. single thing right here. Y'all want to add something there? Nope, you're on a roll. Oh, okay. <laughs> Verse seven, he said. Oh, he didn't give us dominion over other people, though. Oh, no, he did that's not. That's important. Right. <laughs> yeah. and, that's the one, and that's the one that we're trying to do. That's, you know, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's the one we have a problem with because we yeah. always trying to control everybody else and we can't even control our own self. Right, so, right. Yeah, good we need, point. We need to just worry about ourselves. He gave us dominion over everything but yeah. other people and you know what i think that's why it's good that more than one person is sharing this because when we when we begin to to talk and to share a lot of times we that which we already know we assume everybody else already knows that and so when we get a chance to interject i'm like Mm -hmm. you're absolutely right because it's almost Mm -hmm. like when you say when you ask the question so what did you do today well i went to the store or i stayed home or i did this and i did that we never think to say we breathed oh that's true because we just automatically do it and that's the same kind of concept that i'm speaking of here is that we just automatically think people know that thanks dr walker (laughs) that was good (laughs) yeah it was i love you too i'm excited because i know that my thinking is what it is and y'all's is what it is that's what makes it beautiful for us to be able to share what God is showing us because he shows it to us individually based on our experience and our training. And I just don't think there's anything better personally, but you know, that's me and my stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anything else, Doc, before I move on? Nope, that was it. I thought okay. that was important to remember. It was important. <laughs> it was extremely important. <laughs> Verse seven says, behold, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him and all the tribes, nations of the earth will mourn over him, realizing their sin and guilt and anticipating the coming wrath. So it is to be, amen. Amen. And there's a couple of passages that supplement that, that repeat it in Daniel. So we're going to be going back and forth to Daniel because Daniel compliments very, very clearly a lot of what's going on right now. In fact, let's just roll to Daniel chapter seven right quick. Daniel chapter seven. You guys know who Daniel was. He was the prophet. You got, of you got me over here having like five Bibles sitting in front of me. <laughs> well, I, I, got I, I need to three. keep one over here to stay in revelation then i need another one but when you say move to something else (laughs) i am so delighted you're a teacher because that is what teachers do they teach people how to study and how to learn and that's what you do you got to have all those reference books but now you can google everything the thing is you got to print it or go back to it and say yeah i ain't got time for that i just get no come on let, let's bring the technology people in come here on, Rhonda, come so on. i've got a tab for this a tab for that and i'm just clicking through my computer okay <laughs> All right. that's that works right. too okay <laughs> you have to train us now, now, I, I still can't that. move that fast because uh it, it doesn't always work that fast hey, but it, but it works, i did though. actually go look up the churches when she was okay. talking about it okay so okay. yeah so Rhonda, i'm i'm doing the manual and uh technology okay, okay. <laughs> see I, i'm so happy that you guys you see how much this is needed because i can only bring my little piece but you guys have pieces that are much more valuable and much broader and affect more people than i can ever affect so i'm grateful to have the two of you on here i'm honored to have Rhonda, and i'm honored to have dr walker on here co-teaching this this uh, lesson on the revelation i show us of god because he's honoring it are y'all amen. with me amen I'm, I'm, okay so thank you for joining me ladies women amen. okay so now in he he chapter seven no where was i chapter daniel seven is what yeah daniel seven that's right and verse 19, let's go straight to verse 19. Because Daniel is talking about these end times. Daniel had a vision too. 
And this is Daniel's vision, similar to John's. They were connected. So God started, remember, we said when he created it, he finished it all out. So now <laughs> we're walking it out. And the Old Testament is Christ. They say Christ concealed, but I think it's just pointing to the revelation of Christ, but in an Old Testament fashion or manner of thinking. And then Christ revealed is in the starting with the gospels and then going on into the letters that were written to the churches because we're still talking about the same churches amen uh from day one and they but these kingdoms were formed in order for the churches to become so we're dealing with and in daniel we remember daniel everybody remember him he's the one that went and lined in and i think the lyrics of the song said that um the Daniel prayed and the lions became his friend <laughs> because they threw him in because Daniel refused to bow down to some statues that were not God. He was like, I know who my God is and y'all ain't gonna get me to do that. And we gonna go. He has some friends, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, which people call a bad Negro. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> we, we just need to know that we're present throughout the scripture. We'll talk about the black presence at another time. Verse 15, who's reading? 15, uh, as for me, Daniel, my spirit was distressed within me and the vision in my mind keeps alarming me. I approached one of those who were standing by and began asking him the exact meaning of all of this. So he told me and made me made known to me the interpretation of these things. These great beasts, which are four in number and four are four kings who will arise from the earth, but the saints of the highest one will receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever for all ages to come. Okay, now. There was, we're talking about the first four historical kings, rulers. There's Rome. We have to, there's a, a drawing. I need to get a copy of it that shows each one of the powers starting, superpowers starting with Rome and then going down to Greece. And each one of them had a different method of rulership, but they were all a part of this whole process. You got anything, Andres? What, um, what's the picture you're trying to get a visual the, the of? interpretation of Daniel and his vision. Let's see. Well, let's keep reading. We'll, we'll yeah. Okay. So Rhonda, one of these. Verse, what, 16? You want to read 16? Uh, I, I went past 16. You want you 16 again? Yeah. I'm at 19 now. Okay. <clears throat> 16. I approached the one of those who were standing by and began asking him the exact meaning of all things. So he told me and he made known to me the interpretation of these things. Okay. These four beasts are four kings who will arise from the earth. But the saints, believers of the Most High, will receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever for all ages to come. So we know that that refers to Romans. The, the, keep going, 19. Then I desired to know the exact meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful with its teeth of iron and its claws of bronze and which devour crushed and trampled down the remainders, remainders with its feet. And the meaning of these, of the 10 horns, okay, I'll wait, I'll stop there. Did you want me to stop there? Yeah, basically Daniel is telling us, he's reflecting what he saw, four kingdoms, four kings, bishops, and then he rolls into, and he'll give us more explanation and detail on them as we go. But he's describing what they look like, 19. 20. And the meaning of the 10 horns that were on his head and the other horn which came up and before which three of them fell, namely that horn which had eyes and a mouth uttering, uttering great boast 
and which are larger in appearance than its associates. Okay, so this is looking like a monster here. Okay. Let's see a picture. Yeah, you got one. Yeah, I got a couple of them. I know there's a picture of one. I've had it. I just don't have it on me. So. Yeah. Let me share my screen real quick. Oh, I so love that. Yeah, technology is a good thing, Rhonda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad y'all know how to use it. That's why I was asking you so we could at least a um, get a, a, yeah, a vision of it. A vision yeah, of it. Get, yeah, get a feel of mm -hmm. the visual. This is rulership and kings that came into power during this time. Okay. It's interesting because they don't are, show are you them. sharing yet? Yeah, I'm going to share right now. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, Can here we go. Can we see it? Almost. Okay, there we go yeah see how it doesn't it doesn't mm -hmm. even show them i mean it shows them as actual beasts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you the animal, animals are symbolic right yeah so here is the ten headed the the ten horn beast mm -hmm. that you were just talking about ugly boy Ooh. yeah that's ugly mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is a um a video on youtube it's like about 27 minutes long on mm -hmm. understanding Daniel's visions, chapter seven and eight. Wow. So it explains. So we haven't gotten quite to the detail of it yet. Right, yeah. This, this is depicting it. Yeah, but this, yeah, this just gives you an example of what it looks like. And it's interesting, the animals that have been expanded upon, one is like a lion, one's like a bear, one mm -hmm. is like a leopard, but this fourth one, hmm, ain't nothing like that. Yeah, that's that's kind the one. Yeah. yeah, that's that's really interesting. Wow. Yeah. Okie dokie. I'm gonna go back and <laughs> listen to the video. Yeah, later. do some detail on that because yeah. we need to know. There's, I've had pictures, and I don't know where my I got so much stuff is crazy, but at any yeah. rate, very good, Doctor Walker. Mm -hmm. Very good. So now we can at least see some of these monsters look familiar, and some of them don't. Yeah. And so, but when you think about it, and there's an analogy between the kingdoms, the actual kingdoms that came about, that the government that lived out, and a part of our study, when we do the government, God is linking this thing together, is going to have to deal with kingdom government. What was God talking about? Because he said, I've made you a kingdom of priests. A kingdom means a rulership, an area of rulership. So we we've, we've got a whole lot to go, a whole whole lot. All right, so we got Daniel seven. We got Daniel seven, nineteen. We're on, tw we, we're, we're on twenty one. Okay, we need to get through twenty seven. Okay. okay, you want me to keep going all the way? Please. Okay, I kept looking, and that horn was wagering war with the saints. And the over and overpowering them until the ancient days came, and the judgment was passed in favor of the saints of the highest one. Mm. And the time arrived when the saints took possession of the kingdom. 23. Mm. Thus he said, The fourth beast will be uh, a fourth kingdom on earth, which will be different from all the other kingdoms, and will devour the whole earth and tread it down and crush it. 24. As for the 10 horns out of the kingdom, 10 kings will arise and the others, the, and another will arise after them. And he will be different from the previous ones and will subdue the three kings. He will speak out against the most high and wear down the saints of the highest one. And he will intend to make alteration in times and in law and they will be given into his hands for a time at times and half a time yeah, but that's the like court, two and a half years yeah okay <laughs> mm -hmm. amen Honestly, and yeah. but the courts will sit for judgment and his dominion will take away and the annihilation and destroy forever then the sovereignty and dominion 
and the greatness of all kingdoms under the whole heaven will be given to the people of the saints of the highest one. His kingdom will be ever the, an everlasting kingdom and all dominions will serve and obey him. Okay, now that sounds just like Christ, right? He's saying, all of this is rolling out. These kings gonna come in, they gonna reign supreme. They gonna have the iron and the, the, the uh, I think the Romans were the iron kingdom. There's a whole lot of symbology here. So we have to do some, a little more research in order to make it clear, clear. But we can designate the, the nations that have ruled the earth if we know world history at all. We've had all these wars and now he's saying, but the ultimate, and that's what Daniel is getting to, is that it's gonna go through all these iterations like we grow from childhood to adulthood to old age and then we die. Okay, this is the same lifestyle or pattern that all the kingdoms that are being built and that have been built and that have existed will go through. They have a beginning, they have a middle where they reign in power and then they wane in power and then they die. So the cycles, if you think about everything that exists has a beginning. A middle, a end. Same thing with these kingdoms, because we represent the citizens of the kingdoms, and our mindset is the power with which we we wield to do whatever it is we've been called to do. Same thing with nations; it just goes up from individual to leaders, and we got a whole lot of real crazy history that you know we're not going to get into. I think that our major focal point is that Christ's kingdom has dominion in the end. It's gonna outlast all of them. We're gonna be here when he does, what, when he, if we're supposed to be here at that time. But basically we are going to roll through all of these. He's telling us, this is what's gonna happen. This is what you will see, expect it. Don't be ignorant of the enemy's devices. Just allow it to flow because you can't change in any way. Just change who you are in relationship to me. That's why he said, do know what I said, be obedient to me. Does that make sense? Yes. Hello, we got any historians on, on, on the line, please give us your historical account. But if we wanna go into studying all the wars and all that stuff, we can do that. But this was his, his vision. He said, I see it. And this is what's gonna go down. And as we, um, while we're over in um, Daniel, because there's a whole lot of detail, and maybe we need to look at just seven before we shut before we uh, go off today. The, he's given us the four give vision of the four beasts. My tongue is getting tired. Of chapter seven, somebody want to read that? Andres, you got that. Chapter seven in Daniel? Yes. That, well, verse one. We, should, we probably should have started there, but the specifics started in uh, the other verse. Yeah. Hold okay. on. Let me scroll back up. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, she's gone. I just is gone. See, she's on a research trail now. Yeah. When I get on, when I start researching, it'd be all over with. I'll be on, in baby. there. We need, we need you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions appeared in his mind as he lay on his bed. Then he wrote the dream down and related a summary of it. Daniel said, I saw in my vision by night and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea, the nations, and four great beasts, each different from the other, were coming up out of the sea in succession. The first, the Babylonian empire, empire under Nebuchadnezzar was like a lion and had the wings of an eagle. I kept looking until, okay, so we need to pause right there. Okay. Let's think about this. Okay. Like a lion mm -hmm. with the wings of an eagle. Mm -hmm. The okay. lion rules the jungle. Yes. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. lion rules the the animal kingdom. Mm -hmm. Eagle rules the air kingdom. kingdom. Yep. 
just just <laughs> think about the power. Yes. Oh my Thank God. You. Thank you. Like, okay. I kept looking until its wings were plucked and it was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a man. A human mind was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second one, the Medo Persian Empire was like a bear and it was raised up on one side domain and three ribs were in its mouth between its teeth, were in its mouth between its teeth and it was told arise, devour much meat. After this, I kept looking and behold another one, the Greek empire of Alexander the Great, mm -hmm. like a leopard, which had on its back four wings. Mm -hmm. Like those of a bird, the beast also had four heads. Alexander's generals, his successors. That's what those four heads represent. Mm -hmm. And power to rule was given to it. After this, I kept looking in the night visions. And behold, I saw a fourth beast, the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. Terrible and extremely strong. And it had huge iron teeth. It mm -hmm. devoured and crushed and trampled down what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that came before it. And it had 10 horns, 10 kings. Okay, I need to pause right there. Okay. Because if you think about the Roman Empire, mm -hmm. religion, we, when we look at the different aspects of religion mm -hmm. and Catholicism, that's where it originated. Exactly. The well, Roman Empire. Absolutely. And yeah. See, yeah, Rome became the superpower, superpower. Yes, exactly. Yes. So it started in Babylon and it mm -hmm. moved to Middle Persia, then it moved to Greece, and then Rome came into play. And this yeah. statue that they have of Daniel that you, you guys can't see, because uh, I don't know how to do the screenshot thing, uh, but it gives you that it says Babylon and me. I was trying to think of it, it just didn't come. Now mm -hmm. it's here. And so think in terms of Rome as being the superpower, the last superpower. Yeah. But it was converted from being a superpower. And there's a whole lot of history behind how the Roman Catholic Church and how one of the leaders of the day right. they told everybody to be a Christian. So there's a whole whole bunch going on over there that you know is relevant but it's not relevant because we can't yeah. you know we I, can't cover it all but yeah i think that's why the 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 fourth beast beast is so different coming out of the um roman empire because it represents mm -hmm. so many things yeah a divided kingdom yeah it mm -hmm. represents the legs of iron and the mm -hmm. feet of iron and clay so yeah. iron was wrong those chariots and that's how they mo they muscled their way and their power into everything and in when you go to um israel you will see roman columns and statues and different artifacts that let you know that rome has occupied israel and that kingdom over there and that it lived out its, its days and then it was kind of well, it's said from iron to clay. So yeah. there's no difference between, well, there's a major difference between iron and clay. But yes. it, it the power went from being a muscle down to something that was easily breakable and destroyable. And that's, you know, what, what we're looking at here. This is part of Daniel's vision. This is what God showed him. So I love it. I love it. It was, it's, it's 11 o'clock, huh? Yeah, <laughs> already. <laughs> <laughs> okay so we're gonna stop right here at um verse eight yeah verse eight. seven verse eight okay and um then next week we'll talk about the ancient of days reigns and that's that's out of daniel because you can't study daniel without the revelation because it gives you the detail of how this thing rolls out so we need at least two bibles y'all when you come back next week <laughs> You need one or a Bible has, and a computer. Uh, oh yeah, well, a computer. You know, I can't look at the computer and talk and then research stuff and all that. So you guys are much more versatile and 
so much more powerful than I am with all this technology. So I am again honored to be able to um, to to share with you the little bit that God has given me and how we um, how we go from there. And there's I see a chart in here. Maybe one of y'all can show me how to do it because it's got pictures of the statue that Daniel saw in this vision. And I just particularly you because I know you dream a lot. You have yeah. visions and you have dreams and they come to pass. Um, I do. So, yeah. And so it's, it's kind of good. All right, Rhonda, what else? Uh, what else? We, we're going to wrap this up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I just really want everyone to go over to, uh, go, you know, we just posted um, uh, the YouTube link. So mm -hmm. please go over there and, um, and, and uh, subscribe to the YouTube. We're mm -hmm. going to move to YouTube live next week, next Sunday, 10 o'clock. Please meet us over there uh, so that we can continue this conversation of the revelation. Yeah, and over there, everybody can comment and we can see everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love it. I tell you, it's more than a notion. But yeah, Daniel, the statue and the visions of the beast, they are all symbolic of something that has already gone down and or that is going to go down. And, you know, Christ came right at the end of the division of those kingdoms. So it's pretty exciting to see how world powers fit into God's own um, plan. Remember, this is a divinely orchestrated plan that was and is and is to come. And if Christ was here when at the beginning, he's here now and he will be here when everything culminates, whatever that is. Ah, uh, I wanna look at my folks to thank them Anybody, either, either one of you guys have any more you want to say? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Teresa, I love you dearly. Um, thank you for joining us. Carla Valley, I thought about you recently. So it's good to see that you're still kicking in with us. Javon, I love you, your mom and your son. Denny Lee Mitchell, Lil Fitz. We're happy to see you, but you probably don't have a Lil Fitz now. Uh, <laughs> Antonio. Wakirin. Hey, Antonia. It's good to, um, I think she's out of Nashville. Thank you for joining us. Oh, Kenlawan Aladi Soyinka. I'm hoping I'm saying that's right. Geraldine Crabtree. Thank you for Revelation. She says Revelation. Angelique Johnson. Thank you for joining us. Patty Bauer. Thank you for joining us. Hey, Mary D. Nice to see that you are joining us as well. Love to your family. Stephanie Turner Miles is also watching. I want to thank each one of you. And Lord, I so thank you for Rhonda and Anderson for the call that you've placed on each of our lives to just share what it is that you've given us and that you give us in this teaching because we have three very different perspectives which is wonderful. And I thank you that they complete each other and that we wanna give as clear and complete a picture of your word and what we know as is possible. So I pray right now for the rest of this week that we are able to get back to this, that you give us the time to study and to be able to just pull pieces together. And I thank you because you are our God. And we are your daughters and your servants and becoming your bond servants because this is a labor of love. And I thank you for this labor of love right now. I thank you for every person that it will touch. I thank you for every person that it will impact, move, upset, whatever your intended purpose or mission is for calling us to do this and giving us a presence of mind and the resources and technology and electricity and all the elements involved. I thank you that truly you're showing us that where you guide, you will provide and that's in everything. So if we bump into a wall, then we need to stop and then say like the um, little shooter, my woman, I thought this was a wall 
but it's really a door. I have to wait for God to show me when it opens and how to walk through. I thank you for that this week. Let us walk through those doors supernaturally and accomplish what you called us to do. In Jesus' name, bless them, Lord. Bless everyone who tuned in and bless everyone who will see and hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Not just the Spirit, but the Holy Spirit, which is God working in us. Let us have a blessed week and serve you with all our might and all our heart and all our strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.